And in the midst of free agency, which means you're in for the treat last night, a special Skype session. Wow, Skype. Some in person. Okay. Oh, uh, the committee Skype. met, bought, toiled, and burned the midnight oil to deliver the best segment in all of sports television. It's an honor and a privilege. It's time for a special edition, free agency edition of Nick's Tears. Wow. It is, and as mentioned earlier, but I'll say it again, mm. two of our nine committee members will be on this show on Friday. They're mm -hmm. staying over. Brew is gone. They said they would only come on if Brew wasn't here because he's disrespecting the committee <laughs> so much. So it worked out Are they quite well. Secret or like the Ray, mafia style? style? No, they're gonna work. Yeah. They will be unmasked on the show. All right, bottom of the tiers. All 32 teams already planning for 2025. Uh, the Jets got added to it because they're planning for a campaign in 2020, like cabinet appointments, a lot of things they got to do. Those four teams are like, okay, if we can stabilize, figure out the quarterback situation this year, then maybe next year we can actually make Not some unfair. moves. Right? Praying to the quarterback gods. All So Denver and Minnesota are like, please let this be a Big Ben situation. Where the third or fourth quarterback off the board that's available in the teens ends up being awesome because that's their bo both drafting after 10. The Giants are praying, please let Greg Jennings have a victory lap next year on Daniel Jones. <laughs> and, the, and the Titans are hoping that they, you know, they don't have to pray quite as hard because Levis showed some signs, but still he's second round pick. You got to have some things break your way. Uh, speaking of things breaking your way, everything has to fall perfectly. So all three of these teams, you can make a case, are going to be playoff teams next year. But everything has to fall perfectly. The Cardinals have to crush the draft. Kyler's got to be healthy and play mm -hmm. the way we've seen him play. The Saints need all of their 30-something-year-old guys to play at least a dozen to 16 games. It's going to be very hard. And Derek Carr to bounce back. And the Seahawks need rookie head coach and Geno to be on the same page and Geno to have a season more similar to two years ago than last year. It can happen, but everything's got to fall perfectly. Omar Little. Arguably the greatest character. I think that's the next group. If it's not, go ahead and reveal the next group. I'm sorry. Intriguing with the ceiling. Omar's after that. My apologies, guys. Intriguing with the ceiling. All of these teams believe they're going to be playoff teams. All of them are. intriguing. Anthony Richardson coming back from injury is maybe the biggest unknown. What you're going to see Matt Ryan look like with the Falcons. All, all of Matt Ryan. Matt Jeez, Ryan Louise, I can't Falcons get over it. Cousin. I kind of know. <laughs> cousins with the Falcons. But none of those teams as presently constituted can win the Super Bowl. All of them will be disappointed if they don't make, make the playoffs. Now, I was obviously a little over eager for the Omar Little tier. Fans of The Wire know what's Omar Little's greatest line? Come at the king, you best not miss. All five of these teams took their shot at Kansas City. All five missed, and now we are peeling it back a bit. We're taking a few steps back because mm. we took our shot, and now we weren't good enough last year or the year before, and now we're going to be a little worse than we were last year or the year before because we are losing players, whether it's Roquan Smith, your entire secondary, se secondary Mike Williams, the, the, your best defensive tackle in Christian Wilkins signed for $100 million, in, or Patrick Queen for Baltimore, pardon me, and Mike Williams leaves the Chargers, you, Christian Wilkins leaves the Dolphins, and the Eagles figuring out what they're going to do, but don't worry, I'm sure Saquon Barkley will <coughs> fix it. Next, preparing for or a lot to love, a lot of upside, the Packers and the Bears. So I know people are going to think this is a little too bullish on the Bears, but the Bears were a seven-win team last year with an awful quarterback situation, and they are getting a generational quarterback in the building, plus all the free agency money, plus another top 10 pick. Everybody loves the Packers. They're both in the weaker conference. They both have, there's a lot to love and a lot of upside. Now, praying for an AI invite. What's AI? Any guesses? Any guesses? Wilds? I mean, I'll fall into it. Yeah. Artificial intelligence. Nope. Arrowhead invitation. Exactly. They are I just hoping. They are just that. hoping. <laughs> can check in the mail. Are we gonna get to be there? We just hope we get to be the runners up in the AFC. <laughs> That's our ceiling and we know it, but we would be delighted to be there. Still really, really good. Listen, I understand why there's skepticism. 
But these are both good teams that have had minimal offseason losses. The Niners' biggest loss, Eric Arms said, that's a real one. But they have since added uh, Leonard Floyd and Malik Collins, and it seems like uh, Mike Silver saying they might add more. Dallas hasn't lost much, hasn't added much. They're both double-digit win teams that we know we question them in the playoffs. For Dallas, it's because of their coach and quarterback. For the Niners, it's because of their coach and quarterback, I guess. But they're really good teams. And now to near the top of the tiers, forever enshrined. So what do I mean by that? Think about those two guys that mobbed Hank Aaron after 715, or the Soviet hockey team, or Brian Russell. You can see them all, right? Because they're on someone else's legendary highlight reel. Huh. And one of these two teams is likely to be on the field when the Chiefs win their third straight Super Bowl. Wow. And they will be forever enshrined to history as wow. They were there. Now, that also means I think these are the two best teams in the NFC as presently constituted. And, no surprise, reveal the top of the tiers, please. Rewriting the GOAT record books. Whether it's team, coach, quarterback, they're trying to rewrite it all. That is the committee's off-season tiers. Greg Jennings. Uh, well, I like the top of the tiers. Obviously, okay. oh, the Chiefs. Yeah, thanks. There's a lot that I could go on and go on about. What? But let's focus on the Raiders. And I, I'm not going to even acknowledge this the names because we weren't given the names but the Raiders the Raiders at the bottom at there? the bottom like this was an eight and nine team a team that finished four and two in that division and we're making it seem like that they, they're just going to lie down for everybody they just got better in free agency on on both sides of the ball with Wilkins and Gardner Minshew whether we want to believe it or not Gardner Minshew is a better quarterback than Jimmy Garoppolo and and their current yeah, the guy right. under center right now, Aiden O'Connell. Like, I like – look look at where you have the Colts. Like, the Colts are there in, in, in large in part because of what we saw them do last year with Gartner Minshew under center. Ooh, almost, take. almost making the postseason. I like that take. This team was better than the Broncos last year. The Broncos fought. They have nothing. And you have them at the bottom? Yeah. Like, I just – I can't – I'm I like not at all a Raiders fan. But boy, you are completely <clears throat> disrespecting the Raiders. I like that. Yeah. Uh, the bulletin board's very skeptical. Oh, they've been oh that's trash. what it is. Mahomes rules. Well, yeah, that's, guys, keep your, make your eye on the ball. Why don't you try to not be, you know, an embarrassing franchise for the last mm. decade rather than worried about Patrick okay. Mahomes? And also, $25 million that's, for Gardner Minshew. Come on. Your plan going into the year is Gardner Minshew? That's Gardner your Minshew plan? Can play. No, no. No, he can't. He, he's he's so, a good backup. He is their planned starter. Is he but, is he better than what they have currently had? I thought Aiden O'Connell played decent last year. He's, he's better than the fact that you the fact that you didn't answer that question. I'll let the Jimmy G slide. Oh my god! All right, I'm a the Ravens, Nick. If you had done this yesterday, before they got Derrick Henry, maybe I'd have let this slide. But with Derrick Henry. They're way down there below the freaking Bears? Uh, I mean, uh, no, no. And their defense, I, I said it, I, I hate, you know, some of the losses. But they got a culture of great defense. That's what sure. they do. They've been in the top three five of the last six years in scoring defense. They've been in the top ten seven of the last eight years in defense. That's culture. Guys that weren't great defenders elsewhere go there and ball out defensively. So the defense is going to be fine. Offensively, now I got Derrick Henry. With all due respect to Gus Edwards and, and J.K. Dobbins and these guys, they ran well behind that offensive line with teams paying attention to Lamar first. What do you think the big man's going to do? And he can still break them too? Oh, my gosh. And they're going to get a receiver in the draft? They oh, do my that gosh. every year, don't they? I don't know if any team spent more draft capital. The high, they, the one, yeah, the Ravens, one. How many? I, the, Ravens should be uh, up. And they've matured. They've what? learned from their mistakes oh, in the AFC they? Championship. Really? Yeah. They will not be doing that foolishness that cost them against I, the Chiefs. You know what? I agree with you. They will not be doing much in the AFC Championship game this coming year. I, Wilds, I have a confession before you go. Go ahead. There was a lot of pushback from the committee about where I had the Ravens. They wanted them up a little bit higher. They wanted them alongside the Bengals and the Texans. Yeah. In the, you know, for the trying yeah. to get an invite to Arrowhead Invitational. I was like, guys, if we put the Ravens on the Omar Little tier, we can justify it and we can bait Brew into further trying to rekindle his love. <laughs>
It's like <laughs> anonymously sending him a I picture thought. of a high school girlfriend. Like, hey, no, nobody knows. So I'm like reminiscing. Thing. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> reminiscing. <laughs> oh, and a <laughs> Baltimore good thing. Together. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. It ended bad, but we yeah. had some yeah. good times exactly. together. We're trying to rekindle that All right, so I also have a confession to make. I thought the Bengals were too low because I didn't get to. We don't get to see the title, mm -hmm. and now you have them in the AFC Championship game. So I'm like, well, that's actually yeah, pretty good. But without seeing the <laughs> title, the you knew AFC, they were. Yeah, right. they were. I know we have them down in the fifth fifth spot or sixth spot. You know, it doesn't go left to right. Maybe yeah. six or seven. But in, in a, and anyway, I made a Bengals. Uh, <laughs> I believe in the Bengals. First of all, Joe Burrow underrated at this point, Greg. Maybe what? when he was when he's healthy, underrated. Maybe. Just say I'm putting out maybe there. He's a very good quarterback. Feels like you were the guy one saying team. that he might be a system quarterback. Once I never said he's a system quarterback. You, I never you said did. You, you flirted, flirted with, with that. Jake yeah. Browning can play a little bit. <laughs> there you go. I'm just you saying. Go. Jake got... Browning or Gardner Minshew, who you got? Probably Gardner. <laughs> just because I like the outfits a little bit more. Uh, but what about the defense you're saying? Uh, Kevin, the defense was actually really bad. They gave up a ton of big plays. Uh, here's the graphic about the big plays, how bad they are. Uh, turns out they're the worst. Ooh. Seahawks, Commanders, wow. and the Lions. That's a lot of big plays. Good news. Wow. Free agency, when got Geno. And a little bit of addition by subtraction, Geno take him away from the Ravens. And this is the this is the type of scouting the Patriots used to do. Oh, did you ever have a big play against us? You did. He intercepted Joe Burrow. <laughs> ended up to it being a Bengals loss. Do we have the video? Nope. That's Oh, there it is a little, yeah. a little bit late. It's just an interception. I told you guys about it. There he goes. He runs back. And finally, this is a Josh special. Yeah. Because no one else really likes to do this except me. A little strength of schedule action? Is it oh, too early? Oh, no. Yeah, maybe. Non-divisional opponents. Some TCs on there, bro. A yeah. handful. We don't know how the year is going to go, but it's it's there are yeah, some TCs right. there. Uh, last two years, NFL best 17-4 in non-division games. If you got some TCs on your schedule, all of a sudden, maybe. Well, they do get the benefit of the the last place schedule, even though they're not a last place quality of team. You know what I mean? That's rare that that happens. That happens usually if your division stacked, which theirs was, or if your quarterback gets hurt, which theirs did. That's yeah. how you can have that. So listen, that's why they're fighting with the Texans. It's fair to be, you know, runners up in the AFC. It's a good spot for them. Yeah. I just it's thought they were spot. too I, low. And by the way, they still have T. Higgins. Maybe Brew's right that they're going to hold their water on T. Higgins. Brew made a compelling Jonah Williams case yesterday. I was shocked he had that right off the top of his dome. That was good. <laughs> that was really good. I crushed. I was <laughs>